Hello friends, this is Dr. Nand Kishore. In the last video, we learned about how to stay fit during lockdown and quarantine. I hope you enjoyed watching the video and are working on the tips how to keep yourself fit. This time around, it's a little different. Clinical medicine is full of surprises. Clinical medicine was never a perfect science and hence there are differences of opinions, differential diagnosis and heavy reliance on the statistics. As there are several possibilities to a similar situation, the natural consequence is a myth. In medicine, most of the disorders are full of myths. Today, we are going to discuss the salient features of viruses and the myths about its spread, virulence, vaccination and treatment. Virus has become the most dreaded word today because of the obvious reasons. In Latin, the word virus means poison. Is it really dangerous? Let's find out. Now, what is this virus? A virus is a submicroscopic infectious agent that replicates only inside the living cells of an organism. The first images of viruses were obtained after the invention of electron microscopy in 1931. On the basis of X-ray crystallographic pictures, the full structure of the virus was known only in 1955. As you can see in the adjacent figure, there is a single strand of RNA covered with a protein capsule called as capsid and that's the structure of a virus. Let us try to understand the life cycle of a virus in a human cell. Now, as is shown in this diagram in cell number one, the virus is waiting to penetrate the cell and after penetration it releases the contents into the cell and in viral RNAs they enter the nucleus where it is replicated by the viral RNA polymerase and then after the assembly these new viral particles are made and released into the extracellular fluid the cell which is not killed in the process continues to make new viruses the types of viruses viruses are of two types depending on the nucleic acid that they contain is a DNA virus and RNA virus DNA is a deoxyribonucleic acid and RNA is ribonucleic acid the genome replication of most DNA viruses takes place in the cells nucleus and replication of the RNA viruses usually takes place in the cytoplasm here is a list of some of the commonly known DNA viruses herpes simplex virus varicella zoster virus which is commonly known as chickenpox cytomegalovirus the structure of which is shown in the adjacent figure Epstein-Barr virus smallpox virus which is completely eradicated from the world now cowpox virus and papilloma virus here is a list of some of the RNA viruses orthomyxoviruses hepatitis C virus commonly known as SCV Ebola virus the picture of which is shown on the screen we had a pandemic of Ebola in 2014 then there is SARS virus that is severe acute respiratory syndrome this world has a pandemic of SARS in 2004 again the origin was in China then there is an influenza virus polio virus measles virus H1N1 commonly known as swine flu virus we had a pandemic of H1N1 in 2009 then there is HIV human immunodeficiency virus some people consider HIV as a pandemic though the HIV the first case was discovered in 1981 till date there are more than 40 million people who have contracted HIV and nearly 800,000 people die every year because of HIV and lastly of course there is a coronavirus now let us come to the common myths attached to the viruses it's not too big too much of a problem to environment and they are limited in numbers that's a myth the truth is our environment has more than a million viruses of which almost 6,000 have been studied in details 
in 1918 pandemic also called as spanish flu or h1n1 virus supposedly had affected 500 million people worldwide almost one third of the population then and killing nearly 50 million people ironically that time no one knew what killed them as viruses were not identified if one corona can be such a problem as you are witnessing now you can imagine what might happen when several others decide to come down heavily on us humans another common myth is viral infections always kill as they do not have any treatment the truth is when infected a host cell is forced to rapidly produce thousands of identical copies of the original viruses but viral infections in human provoke an immune response that usually eliminates the infecting virus hence viral infections are generally self limiting disorders the death rate is 4 to 5% that is still much lower than malaria and tuberculosis and mind well these are the disorder for which there is a definitive cure there is a com- common belief that spread of virus is only airborne as it's a uh, very lightweight organisms the truth is viruses in animals can be carried by blood sucking insects influenza viruses spread by coughing and sneezing norovirus and rotaviruses are transmitted by the fecal oral route passed by the contact and entering the body in food or water hiv is transmitted through sexual contact and by exposure to infected blood apart from infective disorders viruses do not cause any other disease now that's a myth the truth is slightly different the relative ability of the viruses to cause disease is described in terms of virulence apart from common cold flu chickenpox and cold sores many serious diseases such as rabies ebola virus disease aids hiv avian influenza and sars are caused by viruses human herpes virus 6 can cause neurological diseases such as a multiple sclerosis and chronic fatigue syndrome many viruses are capable of causing cancers merkel cell polymorph virus causes merkel cell carcinoma hepatitis viruses they cause liver cancer t lymphotropic viruses cause adult t cell leukemia human papilloma viruses can cause cancer of cervix skin anus and penis epstein barr virus can cause burkitt's lymphoma hodgkin's lymphoma b lymphoproliferative disorder and nasopharyngeal carcinoma there is a common belief that viruses can cause only human damage and they are of no use to us the truth being viruses are important tools in cell biology research particularly in studies on macromolecular synthesis vaccine is the only way of preventing infections by viruses the truth being vaccines are no doubt the cheapest and effective way of preventing the infections but vaccines are not always possible because some viruses mutate very fast by the time vaccine is ready it's an effective against a prevalent one smallpox and polio were the only two vaccines which were really effective till date which were helpful in eradicating the disease vaccines are available to prevent over 13 viral infections in humans antiviral drugs kill the viruses the fact is antiviral drugs do not deactivate or destroy the virus they inhibit their replication thereby they prevent the viral load from increasing to a point where it could cause pathogenesis which in turn allows the body's innate immune mechanisms to neutralize the virus there is a common belief that antibiotics work against viruses the truth being no antibiotics work on viruses viruses do not have metabolic processes of their own and they always live in the host cells so the toxic effects of antibiotics occur only to the host cells so the take home message is viruses do not have curative treatment your immunity will carry you through viruses are here to stay 
and antibiotics do not have any role to play in viral disorders do not abuse antibiotics this presentation wouldn't be complete unless we pay our tributes to two of the greatest scientific minds of our era edward jenner who invented smallpox vaccine and jonas salk who invented polio vaccine how many lives must have been saved and how many disfigurements must have been prevented is anybody's guess we salute them thanks for watching the video here is dr anand kishore taking your leave if you like the video give me thumbs up thank you